your hands together for the one and only Apostle Joshua Selman. the name of the Lord it's well standing I want us to honor Pastor Larry amazing man of God I love this Thank you. then I sincerely want to appreciate the entire Sorry, am I doing something wrong? Across the South South, thank you so much for those who have traveled, those who have labored, those who have sacrificed so much. I believe that God has brought us together to bless our hearts, to lift us. The Bible says they go from strength to strength, as many who appear before Him in Zion. And I upfront want to truly appreciate your protocol and security team absolutely amazing people absolutely amazing people navigating through the traffic and um, praise the name of the Lord I'm ready God is ready let's pray father bless our hearts this morning move in such a phenomenal way may your word come with power we have come and in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. Standing here this morning, oh God, are men and women of the gospel, business people, people in parliament and government, career people, and all kinds of people standing waiting to receive with heart expectant and we thank you because we know that you are here mending broken hearts I worship you I worship you truly he is here moving in this place we worship you we worship you therefore Lord move in your power and your grace let no ministry remain the same let no man of God remain the same let no woman of God remain the same we have experienced your grace in a measure but we pray that you move us deeper be glorified oh God in Jesus name I pray please clap your hands and be seated the Lord bless you hallelujah Pastor Larry thank you thank you again we cannot thank you enough for the courage the stamina the the resilience to make this meeting happen thank you thank you hallelujah this is a school of the spirit it's it's a minister's conference basically even though it extends to everyone um, but we'll be dealing with three things basically we may have that down and then we'll begin to discuss number one we'll be looking at the fundamental of effective ministry the fundamentals of effective ministry we'll be redefining concepts and trusting that the Lord will help us realign our understanding about ministry number two we'll look at the concept of discipleship and doctrine discipleship and doctrine a spiritual strategy allocated for the making of men in the kingdom discipleship and doctrine and 
then God grants us grace. We'll look at the principles of church growth, supernatural church growth. These are principles that we need to learn. And then finally, we'll look at supernatural ministry. The ministry of signs and wonders. So I hope that these are the things that we'll get to cover. Fundamentals of effective ministry. Discipleship and doctrine. And then number three. Principles of church growth how God builds, how God lifts, and then finally, supernatural ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Help us, O God, again in Jesus' name. So let's see the much that we can cover within the few minutes we have. Time is already spent, so we'll make use of what we have left. Colossians chapter 4, please, from verse 17 we're looking at the fundamentals of effective ministry there are few fundamentals that we must know he says i will not be negligent to remind you of these things although ye know them and are established in this present truth for some of us it's a reminder for others it's a reorientation altogether praise the name of the lord colossians 4 and verse 17 let's read together if we can have kjv otherwise this is fine thank you one two read say unto Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the lord that thou fulfill it two instructions tell Archippus, take heed Take heed means pay attention. Take heed means be sensitive. Take heed means be discerning. Take heed means be intentional to the ministry which thou hast received, not from a man of God, not from the branch of a church, not from a dream, not even from a vision. Take heed. It's important to know where you receive this from. It says you received it in the Lord. It says that thou fulfill it. So he's saying pay attention. The delicacy around this ministry would require that you pay attention so that you fulfill it. Second scripture. Second Timothy 1 and verse 9. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9. It says, Who had saved us and called us? Say, I am called. Say it again. Those inside, outside, together. One, to go. Say, I am called. The Bible says, He has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus before the world began so the bible tells us that we're not only saved we're called this is a revelation many believers know they are saved but they do not know they are called the bible says everyone who was saved was also called hmm. it's not just a special privilege to a few people if you were saved then you were also called one last scripture blessed be the name of the lord john 15 and verse 16 john 15 and 16 we're looking at the fundamentals of effective ministry ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means to commission to legitimize an operation it has nothing to do with oil to ordain means to make your activity legitimate recognized by the forces within that environment so if you are not ordained it means that your activities are illegitimate so i have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should be such that it abides he wants you to bear fruit and he wants that fruit to abide can we add one more scripture 
before I begin to discuss. Second Peter chapter 1, popular scripture, we'll start our reading from verse 8. Second Peter chapter 1. It says, for if these things be in you, what things? You have to read the preceding verses, right? It says, add to your faith virtue, virtue, these and that. It says, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall be neither barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Let's read verse 3 together. One, verse 10 now. One, two, go. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling for if ye do these things, prophesy, ye shall never fall. There are things, it says, even though you are called, there is no doubt that you are saved and you are called. But it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting if you were really called. It says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Give diligence, pay attention, walk by the principles. It is your responsibility to make your calling and your election sure. What is ministry? You cannot imagine the level of confusion, respectfully speaking, that surrounds this idea of ministry. Even among ministers of the gospel. You ask an average man of God, what is ministry? And for many people, ministry happens when you have a pulpit in front of you, you have a mic, are we together now? You have an audience listening to you of some sort. The moment that happens and you are speaking behind a pulpit, we call it ministry. For others, ministry happens when you are a general overseer or a president of some sort of Christian organization and then you have to lead people through a spiritual session. We call it ministry. What exactly is ministry ministry goes beyond pulpit ministry goes beyond congregations ministry goes beyond titles ministry goes beyond sessions of services let me tell you what ministry is ministry has to do with kingdom service kingdom service ministry the original idea of ministry has to do with kingdom service now listen carefully any effort any contribution any activity geared towards the revelation of christ and the glorification of the same is called ministry any at all any activity motivated by a genuine love for god and in Tended to reveal Christ and bring glory to him is called ministry. If you do not understand this, the limitation in that understanding will tell on the kind of people you mentor and raise. Are we together now? That ministry has absolutely nothing to do with pulpits, titles, church buildings, mics. These are only tools that give that motivation expression. You have to understand this. That means, is it possible for me to not be behind a pulpit in one year and yet consider myself to still be effective in ministry? Are we blessed? Any effort, any contribution, and any activity that is made and done towards the revelation of Christ and the glorification of jesus is ministry therefore a true ministry is defined by motivation more than activity 
it is the motivation behind an activity that qualifies an activity to be called ministry or otherwise just because you are behind the pulpit just because you are speaking just because a bible is being opened while you are speaking does not mean you are in ministry the first index for measuring ministry is that we have to vet the motivation to what end if it does not capture kingdom come no matter how religious that activity is you are not in ministry The ministry is defined by the motivation more than the activity so if you have a sunday service a wednesday midweek service for those ministers of the gospel now and maybe a prayer meeting on friday and you repeat that for many years chances are that will believe okay i'm in ministry then you have an office then you have branches not wrong in themselves but when you come to the economy of god the first thing he vets is not the activity the frequency of the activity and the zeal behind them does not matter he will have to examine the motivation to what end this investment in that level of zeal and sacrifice to what end if kingdom come is not captured in that activity in god's mind you are not in ministry isaiah chapter 1 down to chapter 5 has an interesting rendition of a great prophet of God prophesying and speaking and saying a lot of great things and then in chapter 6 verse 1 of Isaiah the Bible says in the year that Kung Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord when he saw the Lord he saw the train of his robe he filled the temple and Isaiah was shocked to hear what God was asking for he was not even saying, well done, good and faithful servant. The first thing he did to Isaiah, he said, I hope you know you are not in ministry. Isaiah was surprised. I'm a prophet. I'm not fake. He said, before I even talk to you, take a coal of fire, touch his mouth, because I don't even trust what you are saying. So what have you been doing? This is a man who is doing ministry on earth. And as soon as he has an encounter, God says, I'm not ready to listen to you. Something is wrong with the entirety of what you are doing. When he touched his coal, he said, now, who shall go for us? Let me. So that statement was still in the realm of the spirit while activities were happening. Heaven was still saying, who shall go? As if God did not see him. And Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. Question, who sent him before? show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest any activity that stems from this motivation love for jesus and a desire to see him glorified is ministry that means listen carefully that means if i clean this speaker from a standpoint of that motivation that i want to see jesus glorified what i am doing as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned is equal to what is happening on a crusade ground it is not the charismatism of the activity no it is the motif and the motivation that means if a woman you've heard me say it again if there is a need for a prophet in Port Harcourt. And a woman says, Lord, my womb is available. Her act of giving birth is called ministry. Because it is a contribution to kingdom come. If I go behind the four horns of the altar to pray. And my prayer is like Anna the prophetess to allow the word to come. In God's mind, that's not prayer. That's ministry happening. 
if I carry my resources and I bring together, I say, let there be an abundance to the end that souls be saved. The name of Jesus lifted. It stops being a donation immediately. The difference between a donation and ministry with your finances is the revelation behind it. Don't forget what we are dealing with. There is a long journey we have in this conference. Fundamentals of effective ministry. We are redefining terminologies. So when you say you are a minister, don't be too quick to say you understand what you are saying. Just let me define it. We'll soon define who a minister is. Let's look at ministry. Ministry. So when I say I am a minister of the gospel, do you know what that means? That means I am one who the entire activity in my life is motivated by a desire to live contributing to the advancement of the gospel any activity that stems from this motivation is ministry and any activity that does not stem from this motivation is not ministry just because i have five friends and everyone is preaching and I decide to also have a church I may be sincere even saving souls you are not in ministry the motivation must be to see Jesus lifted the motivation must be to see Jesus glorified so whilst as the choir people I came in and I saw your lovely people worshiping you can hold this mic as a celebrity musician and then that's entertainment but you can hold this aware that someone in the congregation is hearing me speak and I'm using my voice and this mic. Are we together now? That whilst I am singing, I'm giving you a piece of my secret place to the end that someone's life comes close to Christ. This is ministry. The hour does not come when the preacher comes on stage. The hour comes when your motivation is correct. Are we blessed? Mics, church buildings, pulpits, conferences are only tools. You have to understand this. Everything we do is a tool towards ministry, not ministry itself. This conference is a tool. What qualifies this conference to be called ministry is not the gathering of people is the quality of the information that is communicated in the conference the motive behind it and the patterns that are adhered to whilst we teach we have to correct this because the average young person right now when he says i want to go to ministry here's his idea i want to have a platform that honors me as the sole founder of that platform are you getting the idea now i hope to get a nice mic a few partners then a few members that listen to me and then some kind of administrative setup and if that is not achieved i consider myself to be a failure in ministry this is what has led to jealousy competition it's led to all kinds of dangerous things whereas heaven is clapping for you for doing well you are derailing from something correct to something mundane because you want to go through what men have defined to be ministry how would you call anna the prophet as a failure by what parameter if she was in our time we would call her the greatest failure you spend over 60 years in one in a temple that is not your own only praying let me show you ministry a woman with no ushers no protocol no honorarium no nothing and she just keeps praying maranatha word come jesus did not just come someone called him that woman who called him scripture will be unfair to not recognize her as soon as they gave birth to jesus he was taken straight to those doing ministry first those doing ministry blessed him first anna the prophetess now my eyes have seen simeon the prophet blessed him 
Do you know why John was called great? John did not even prophesy. Yet the Bible says of all the prophets that came before him. Do you know why? The reason, for a long time I did not know why John was called the greatest. He did not have the greatest prophecy, not the greatest persona. He had the greatest motivation, the motif. All other prophets kept building and doing a lot. Of, it was only John that was directly targeted towards the lamb. His assignment was to find the lamb and announce him. And the Bible says, by my rating, since your agenda has zoomed down to Jesus and kingdom come, you are the greatest. Look at this. No prophecy, no conference. So God's rating of greatness is the extent to which you are close to the revelation of Jesus. Not just crowd. Not just all of these things. They are wonderful. A minister is more than a preacher. A minister is more than a geo. A minister is more than a spiritual leader. A minister is the name given to that vessel that is committed to this task of revealing Jesus and bringing glory to him. Whoever commits to that task, the name God gives you for embarking on that task is a minister. Are we, are we clear on this? It's important that we understand this. So you are not just a minister when you are speaking to the world on air. <clears throat> you are not a minister when you now dress well and you are received, you are in a conference, your faces are on posters. We have to redefine these parameters. They are destroying the purity of our pursuit. If for one year my face is not on any poster, I can be bullied psychologically and just, I have an impression like I'm not doing well. So that, that corrupted motif drives me to prayer and fasting. You see, I'm praying for 40 days, but from day one, I'm already wrong. The scorecard is zero. Lord, when will my face also be on that poster? And heaven is saying, who taught you this one now? There are many people who were doing it right. But the pressure, the, a wrong definition deviated them. This is a minister's conference. Are we still together? When God taught me ministry, I said, Lord, thank you for all the things you bring in around my life. But sincerely, my desire is to see Jesus lifted. My desire is to see Jesus glorified. Whatever happens after that, between that, let it be a bonus. Let it be whatever gives me joy. My joy is not when the nations are saying Joshua Selman. I have prayed and prayed and asked the Lord to inoculate me against that virus. That virus called fame. There is a serious side effect to it. It can distract your focus. When you know you are in ministry, every other thing fades away. Once you know you are bringing glory to Jesus, once you know your heart is inclined to serving his purposes, whether it's a popular strategy or not, whether you receive uploads from men or not, you must find rest, brothers and sisters, knowing that you are serving his purposes in truth. Many of us have come here and you, it's called armed and dangerous. There are many dimensions of grace you will receive, but let's put first things first. Because for many of us, the only thing you came here to receive now is power. So that you rush back and say, now you guys, last year you said I'm not powerful. You don't know where I'm coming from. Now you watch what happens here. And you will receive it. But not this version of you. There is a version of you that must be transformed. That is the version that, is, that will receive an impartation. 
if you receive the anointing with this version it will go back because the anointing was designed to stay with certain levels of transformation and if that requisite level of transformation is not attained impartation will be profitless a minister is more than a preacher listen carefully a minister is a vessel a vessel a vessel we're looking at fundamentals of ministry the concept of ministry and a minister this thing has brought confusion in the body of Christ more than you can imagine the moment people say I am a minister a man of God a woman of God an apostle a prophet an evangelist all of that those activities eat up the whole space of our thinking and it doesn't matter how ineffective we are once those titles are there once the form of religion is there we are satisfied psalms 51 verse 17 please psalm 51 and verse 17 let's walk through a few scriptures the bible says the sacrifices of god look up please are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god that will not despise let me talk a bit about the making of a minister now that we have defined what ministry is now that we have defined who a minister is we must walk through the spiritual technology that truly makes a minister in this kingdom ministers effective ministers don't just appear even though potentially we're all called but there is a system that leads to the making of an effective minister the first index to measure a genuine minister is not oratory please listen carefully people of god it's not eloquence it's not leadership prowess the first biblical index to measure an effective minister is brokenness 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 death brokenness the sacrifices of god he says are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise please give us psalms 139 psalms 139 23 and 24 the making of a minister you want god to do much with you here is the key psalms 139 23 and 24 search me oh god hmm. and know my heart Try me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the path that leads men to power in the spirit. It is not sermons. It is not activities. The state of brokenness. What does it mean to be broken? To get to a point where you have no agenda of yourself where your priority all that motivates you is jesus christ a point where your ego is strong a point where your your that that sense of wanting to build an empire for yourself dies you're motivated by one single motivation jesus revealed jesus glorified jesus revealed jesus glorified jesus revealed jesus glorified that is brokenness there are many people who do everything right and wonder why they are not getting these results i will tell you it is because there is no state of brokenness in your heart why do we need brokenness jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10 this is the bible's diagnosis of a man's heart jeremiah 17 please give it to us the bible says the heart is deceitful above all things while reading this scripture find out how many deceptive things we have on earth and the bible says the heart is more deceptive than all of them that means you the owner of the heart can be deceived by your own heart 
it's possible that you do not even know the tendencies that are in your own heart who would have known that a young obedient shepherd in a wilderness that there will also be a murderer in that young boy if you had looked at david and said david you're a killer he would say god punish you i'm a diligent young boy in the wilderness here when you want to do business with god you must expose your heart and allow his light to come and vet you and whatever god tells you is the conclusion believe him even if you've not seen the proof no matter how humble you think you are god will say uh -uh. i search your heart and i found pride i found loss you say god me god forbid and god says i'm the one the one you are saying should forbid i'm the one who is telling you don't wait until you see it after 20 years brokenness do you have the unashamedness to open your heart and say lord i am naked and unashamed search whatever you find i believe you if you tell me there is loss there i would not say i've written 20 books on holiness i will cry and roll before the god of my covenant and say lord help me i show you the kinds of people that god can use are we blessed brokenness is such a powerful state in the spirit it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your bible study all those things find their credence only when brokenness is in place fame can kill like it's done to many of us already financial prosperity and the blessing that results bring it can give you a godlike image before men and you will have to depend on your brokenness as an anchor to preserve you when the tides of pride is pushing you left right and center this is why many people do not last the heart condition of a man the heart condition of a man first john chapter 2 apostle john is teaching us now first john chapter 2 from verse 15 are we still together church is quiet hallelujah the holy ghost is walking in the name of jesus christ this is how champions are made it's a minister's conference remember before the fire fell there was a sacrifice fire does not fall until there is a sacrifice love not the world please look up Apostle John is teaching us now love not the world neither the things that are in the world it says if any man love the world is proof that the love of the father is not in him the word love there is the word eros it means do not develop such an affinity to this world an affinity that corrupts the purity of your heart and your passion for God he's not saying don't enjoy things no love not the world he says pay attention neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he categorizes these lusts into three groups please look up there's an x-ray happening this morning for all that is in the world no matter what it is is divided into three number one the lust of the flesh the affinity that comes to your life by reason of wearing a mortal body this mortal body comes with a side effect and he's saying beware by reason of this mortal body that you carry there are lusts that you must obtain grace to ride above the lust of the flesh it is because you have a body that many of us cannot fast because gluttony once if you are not fasting you can stay a whole day without eating but the moment you declare fast by nine you almost want to die you woke up by seven and by nine you are thinking of breaking the fast and what will you break the fast with granite or juice that's to tell you it's an attack because that thing will not satisfy you it's even honest if you were eating a whole maybe swallow now you know you were really hungry this body loves comfort and anything that puts it in a state of discomfort it will fight you 
By reason of wearing a mortal body, when you are tired and you want to pray, the body seeks that pampering and that, it says, lust of the flesh. Gluttony. Laziness. Slumber. These are limitations that come with the flesh. Then lust of the eyes. You see, this, this pair of eyes God gave us, they, they are great blessings, but they can lead to the damnation of many. Was it not because David saw that he became what he became? If David was blind, it would have been his safety. But oh man of God, you have eyes. And he stood and saw a damsel bathing. That was the beginning of his problem. The same way you stood and you saw a billboard. That's where jealousy started. You saw a car. That's where it started. You saw a building. These eyes are wonderful. But there is a side effect to them. They must be crucified also. There are things we have seen that has brought trouble to us today. And then it says the pride of life. Please look up. The pride of life is different from pride. The pride of life is the self-righteousness and the sense of self-satisfaction that comes on the strength of obvious results. You cannot have the pride of life if you've not achieved anything. The pride of life was what Nebuchadnezzar had. The results were there to show. You can have pride whether you have anything or not. But the pride of life comes on the strength of obvious results. I have built this. Don't question my integrity. My intelligence has been vetted by institutions. They have come to the conclusion that I am intelligent. The books have to show it. The awards have to show it. The branches have to show it. The pride of life. There is a side effect to men when we stand in the midst of success. We forget that there is an authority over us. So it says, remember the Lord. Let it not be that when you have built houses and built all of this, that you say, my power, that's the side effect. And the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. It says, but thou shall remember. That means you can forget. Because of our backgrounds and the deprivation that we largely have gone through in Africa, we look forward to achieving great feats. And these things are wonderful. And when we do, we stand like Nebuchadnezzar and rub it on the face of everyone who didn't believe in you. And then rub it on the face of God too. To remind him once again that we were only using him. And now that we've arrived, he can rest until there is another problem. It's called the pride of life. I can assure you that every problem you have faced in your life that has contributed to derailing your spiritual fervency is one of these. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says whoever has this, the love of the Father is not in him. This is the making of a man of God. We've not spoken about sermons. We've not spoken about conferences. We've not spoken about Bible schools. We've not spoken about principles of church growth. How to, to, to put a, a, an intelligent administrative structure. We're coming there. But for now, it is the state of your heart. You are not a minister because you were ordained with oil. You are not a minister because you, you honorably started your ministry. You are not a minister just because you were mentored properly. The divine ordination comes with your heart. That heart condition, this is what God wants to work on. I'm not ashamed to cry before God every time till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. The higher I rise, the greater I'm open. And say, God, I don't even trust myself at this time again. You become that anchor. We live in a world where, except God helps you, even you, you do not know the tendencies that can come out from you. When a poor man says he's humble, he's lying. He doesn't even know what he's talking about because he has, he, he has not been exposed to the reality that a superior dimension of living brings. So when God is saying, break pride, until 
God vets you himself. He does not trust you. He gave unto one five talent, two talent, and one according to their ability, not according to his love for them. The end of the parable shows he was accurate. The one with five was truly the most faithful. The one with two was commendable because for him to have overcome jealousy and bitterness for not being the one with five, that was a temptation he had to overcome. Then the one with one talent, you see why they gave him one. You see that it was even mercy that led to give him that one. He says, I know you are a hard man, offense, and incompetence. But he couldn't even do anything with the one, and yet he wanted five. That's how many people are. Lord, is it what is there with stadium? Is it not just human beings? And God is saying there's something there. The attack that comes on you when you fill one stadium. The kind of stamina you need, you are not ready for it. Lord, I have resources for the crusade. He says, I will still not permit you. It takes more than money. There is a, there is a level of death to the flesh. You see where the deception of this double portion anointing, I'm not, please don't feel bad. Where we just come and with, with our flesh alive, we just kneel down with honorarium and say, transfer double portion. The person who has just one is looking at you and you're not even seeing what he's standing on and you want to. If you are Elijah, Jezebel will come. Are you prepared? Every anointing has what looks for it. Help, help them, please. Help those people. Please help them. Please take it higher for me. My spirit is fired up now this morning. Hear me. It takes more than impartation. It takes more than teaching Greek and Hebrew. There is a track record of death. If it is power you want to carry. South, South, God sent me here because I believe there is a move of the Spirit coming, but not to this version of us. It does not mean I'm downplaying your relevance. I know there are people seated here who are veterans of the gospel. I do not negate what God has done in your life. But even in heaven, there is room to come up here. He was in heaven and yet he said, come up here and I will show you there are things you cannot see from that plane. When you get to a point where you leave the issue of emoji and the issue of apostle and prophet and cry to him and say, Lord, search my heart. And the devil says, do you know you have 5,000 members and 100 branches? The deception that kills grace. That's why people peg themselves at a level of achievement. The higher you rise, the more your knees should be on the ground. That is the secret of standing. You stand on your knees. When you become a broken vessel, can I tell you? A major part of your ministry will be behind the veil, not on the pulpit. In fact, as a principle, one of the ways God shows you you are valuable is by hiding you. Anything that is exposed is a sign that it is cheap. Go to a boutique and see how they wrap a perfume that is 500,000, a million naira. It may be a small perfume, but you, you see the whole wrapping. You know that you are great to the degree to which he hides you. But this itch to be everywhere, we call it increase. We call it breakthrough. Be careful. Not every open door is anointed. The devil can open the door that leads you to death. I'm seeing oil coming on that lady you are holding. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, there is a shift in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, help her. You will never, never be the same. You want power with God? There is a secret. Oh. It's not just fasting and prayer. This is why many people fast and pray. And at the end of it, they meet familiar spirits. And they return back and say, no, this thing, because your motive is what attracts whatever spirit. The key to be in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on his presence. Let me tell you this. We're about to pray. But I want to show you something that will bless you. 
your relationship with God must be more important than your desire to be famous, your desire to be a good preacher, your desire to speak Greek and Hebrew, the soundness of your doctrine. We think just because you are sound in doctrine, just because you have the anointing you have, you have, you have speech prowess, the ability to articulate yourself well. We vet ourselves and pass ourselves and think we are qualified to be ministers. That is why you will see a man who cannot speak English very well. Maybe he did not even go to school. Maybe he did not even have the privilege, but he is broken. And he says, Lord, I know I'm not much, but if there is anything you can do with this vessel, and God says, you are the one I will pick to fill the stadiums in the south-south. And you will see them come with the simplicity of their heart and say, all I know is Jesus loves you. All I know is Jesus wants to save you. And such power will come from that message. Years ago, when I stood in a Renhard Bonke crusade, I was in Jaws. I went hungry and desperate. I was already a man of God. But I said, man of God, go places. I stood there and you know some of us that God has helped with the grace for revelation a bit there is such pride and arrogance that comes around it you don't want to listen to anybody because you are the only one who knows everything and I stood there and Redar Bonke was sharing a simple story if you carry the kind of hunger that I went with that crusade with you will be angry at that sermon I stood six hours on that ground not to hear a story that looks like you are speaking to Sunday school children but I was hungry we must admit this morning precious people of God that we love Jesus but there is work to be done in us leave your congregation we are going back to them on Sunday but for now we must hold on to the four horns of the altar exodus Bring the lady that shouts now under the anointing. There is. Bring her. Exodus chapter 3. We are going to pray. One thing I know is that you never be the same. Never truly be the same. Exodus chapter 3 please. Your relationship with God. Now, let's look at the story of Moses. We're about to wrap up. The Bible says Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of the Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. We're reading to verse 10. Let me just minister to this lady. I stretch my hands and I declare that everything that is not of the Christ, this is Mount Zion, in Jesus' name, let there be liberty for you. I bring you the life of this kingdom. Let it be over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. It says, and behold, the bush born with fire. The bush born with fire. Hmm, there's a man of God here. You didn't come from Port Harcourt. I'm seeing fire just resting on you right now. A man of God, a minister of the gospel. I don't know whether it's in front here or anywhere. You are not from this city. I just, as I just mentioned that, I just saw it happen right now. Please, when that happens, just bring that person. There is such a baptism that is happening to you right now. You will never forget this conference for as long as you live. There is an ignition that is happening to your spirit, man. An ignition of power. You are contacting genuine grace. This thing is not being, is not faking it. If it's not there. It's not there. It's as simple and as honest as that. We do not come boasting in ourselves. No. We are but products of his mercy also. I have not come to look down on anyone by any means. We have come as co-laborers. Iron sharpening iron. To the end that we become effective. We are just looking at the fundamentals this morning. A strong anointing please when it comes on that man I just want to speak to him I'm seeing this is a real baptism of fire that is coming a vessel of honor 
now the bible says the bush burned with fire and was not consumed follow me please the bible says moses said this is god now moses is about to go to egypt pastor to meet pharaoh i hope you know before you meet the people you have to meet pharaoh you don't go the people you want to call the people you are hoping to bring there is a pharaoh who is keeping them in bondage you can be prepared for the people but are you prepared for pharaoh it is pharaoh you meet first before you meet the israelites in egypt pray in the spirit in one minute wherever you are inside outside just pray in the spirit please take this conference seriously this is a time of spiritual emphasis hallelujah we're going to pray you're a man of god here your name is joshua you have my name who is that come sir please don't be embarrassed sir i'm seeing that something is about to change in your ministry i don't know this man i hope you're not embarrassed sir i truly respect and i honor you i don't know what he does what i'm saying where's the ministry sir in the nation so many states okay in so many states i want to pray for you there are three things i'm seeing god bringing one i'm seeing god raising people who hold your hands like pillars because i'm seeing some pillars falling away in a building this is a building with pillars but i'm seeing some of the pillars going down going down and the lord is telling me that is rebuilding strong pillars pillars are men number one number two i'm seeing there is a dimension of grace that sincerely even though god has helped you sir i'm seeing there is a dimension of grace a dimension of signs and wonders that you truly desire and i'm seeing that god wants to move you with this grace you see i i only minister is an election of grace i want you to understand this I must keep emphasizing it because even we who claim we are real we who claim we are anointed we have not administered ministry with balance and humility sir I stand by the grace of the God who called me I know you are a great man but let me stretch my hands in the name that is above all names you have stood here I do not know what your ranking is in this city but that you have stood before God's people, I stretch my hands, receive that grace, new level. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush was not burnt. Next verse. When the Lord saw that he turned aside, God is trying to get Moses' attention. Understand that this man here at this time was an idol worshiper. Moses had barely encountered the God of the Bible. He was being trained to be the next Pharaoh. Let me show you how God calls our attention. He called him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, he said, here I am. Verse 5, we're reading to 10. And he said, draw not nigh either put off your shoes you know what that means when you come to God he does not continue from where you took yourself no matter how long you go back you start afresh using his patterns just because you have been doing your thing for a long time this is the danger of just shipping in celebrities into the house of God and immediately they continue from where they were no there are there is no instant maturity in this kingdom people must grow we have to be careful don't worry we're dealing with this later on but be careful so that 
we, we do not graduate people arbitrarily out of the school of the spirit just ordain them and send them there's a lot of childishness on the pulpit not because the people are bad but they have not grown an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave take off your shoes before you met me everything you thought about me you thought that was it but now that you've met me, even though they are calling you MOG, let's go back to the school of the spirit. We start afresh. Do you have the unashamedness to say, Lord, if it means starting with me afresh, I've been in ministry for 15 years, but I don't know the name of what I've been doing for 15 years. I'm ready to get it right. And God says, let's go back to the school of the spirit. Ah, God, but my ego, I have raised sons already. There are too many people. How do I start with you? And God says, you are not ready to do business with me. The disciples of John were those who were mentored by John. When they met Jesus, they went back again. He didn't say, okay, you people who came from John, you continue. John was a true prophet. He said, go back, sit down. Blessed are the pure in heart, right? And he said, but John taught us, he said, listen to me, you just write. You want the Holy Ghost? You must go through the school of the Spirit. Take off your shoes, your experience, your perspectives, your mindset for where you now stand. This is not Egypt, Moses. Verse 6. Moreover, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon that God. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, now watch this. Watch how a man is getting into ministry. First, it was an encounter with God. Then God now begins to communicate a burden. What is the burden? I have seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Verse 8, it says, And I am come down to deliver them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land into a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. Nine. Now, therefore, as a result of that burden, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Follow carefully. Come now, therefore. Come now, therefore. Let me tell you how God sends men. The first thing he does is come. God never sends you until he says come. Come is the name of the process that makes you. Come, follow me. God never sends you. If you say God sent you, let me also hear the instruction where he told you to come. Come means come and know me. Your calling is not unto ministry. Your calling is unto God. It is when you are sent that you are sent to do ministry. If you have not been called to God, you cannot be sent. You can't represent a God you do not know. So when you say you are called, you are right. But unto what? Unto ministry. No, sir. You got it wrong. Every time God tells people to come, it's unto himself. Come, follow me. And I will make you. Make you. He says, come now, therefore. When you are done coming, I will send you. The empowerment is at the instance of being sent not being called many of you have been called but you have not been sent you were not patient to understand the difference just because you were genuinely called the time to know god you used it building an architecture for ministry now you are in confusion because you are standing before pharaoh with no sign no strategy but your call is genuine you don't have to be fake to suffer if you don't follow patterns genuinely called but you've not yet been sent let me tell you how he does it he calls you to himself he prunes you he makes you he builds you he empowers you he sends you when he sends you that is when partners will come when he sends you i tell you why there is nobody to come and attend to the needs because you are not yet sent he called you you don't need money to know him you need passion 
but you are looking for partners because you are trying to do what only senders should get there are benefits that only those send will have there are many of us by reason of this conference it may be a painful experience but god is challenging you return back to the cave of adulam he's still waiting for you there return back to the place of training when you started with god he gave you an instruction three hours praying in tongues every day studying scriptures every day you graduated yourself from that class of school of the spirit simply because they gave you one invitation in town that was a spiritual it afterwards you return back when he sent the 70 when he sent the 12 when they were done did he finish the lecture with them Go back to class and learn. When people begin to identify this grace on you, you have to be careful. Because the demand, as we call it, of ministry. Can you come and lead this? Can you come and lead this? And then God just stands and is watching you do your thing. And he said, God, I came from a background where nobody believed me. Don't stop my shine. This is my moment. I have to cash in. And God says, all right. You will see the deficiency of your lectures in the field. In secular education, you can jump classes and read up quickly and write exams and pass. But in the school of the spirit, you miss character 101. The deficiency of that lecture will be waiting for you the day you receive an honorarium of 10 million. That, the, the necessity of that lecture will be waiting for you. The day you meet somebody who almost wants to worship you because God used you to change their home and you miss the lecture that focuses you on glorifying Jesus. We have to stop here and pray. Please help that man of God. We have a lot to to discuss let me challenge you please in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty i lend my voice with pastor and all the leaders the organizers of this conference can i challenge you the time will take for break before the session later on minimize distraction just find somewhere and sit down let it be a time of deep spiritual emphasis some of you i know you are waiting on the lord fasting does not kill it does not kill don't roam around and just waste your time sit down lord search my heart from this message and god begins to show you and says this is what I've, i gave you four dreams trying to tell you this message apostle is preaching you did not understand it now god is telling you it's time for us to start afresh again there is no doubt you are a prophet to the nations there is no doubt you are a kingdom millionaire. There is no doubt. You are a ministry. But did he tell you what you will be doing? Could it be that your ministry is as a mother? You made yourself a preacher. Thinking being a mother is not ministry. Now he's telling you what I need is not your voice, it's your womb. Can he be Lord that much? That far? He told you you're a minister. Automatically you thought you'd be laying hands on people. But he meant ministry with your hands and the works of your hands. That there is a level of wealth that must come from your hand to be part of kingdom come. Help them. God is bringing us visitations. We need to go back. We need to go back. And obtain grace from God. You say, Lord, I'm tired. The best time was yesterday. If I miss that time like Jacob, the next best time is now. We can start afresh. I'm tired of doing this thing I've been calling ministry because clearly it is not working. It's a sign that I'm not getting anything, something right. This is not a call to condemnation. Far from it. We're dealing with a father here. Who said I have loved you with an everlasting love then I have drawn you even with my loving kindness so brothers and sisters let's keep the issue of Rema prophecy <clears throat> there is no doubt about that keep that aside 
we'll visit it in subsequent sessions right now let us join the 20 and 4 elders who bow and say holy 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 the bible says they laid their golden crown a crown is not something you are allowed to fall easily in the next five minutes i don't know how you are going to cry before the god of your covenant pastors veterans of the gospel remember we've asked our members to do this now is our turn to do it go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead forget about who is by your left and right let it be a cry from a broken heart for my eyes have seen the king you're the lamb upon the throne you reign forever Cry before your God. Are you praying? My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. Don't be tired. This is part of the conference. My soul says yes. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only all. Seeking you as a precious joy, not to give up on me. You are my only Jesus. Are you crying? Lord, I surrender absolutely everything. 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 Listen, when we learn to cry before him, it is not an embarrassment, it is not an insult on our ego. It doesn't take away who you are. It only upgrades you in the spirit. Can I tell you this? God is still looking for men. He's still looking for vessels that he will use. In the year that King Uzziah died, what must die this morning for you to see? In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ego died, I saw the Lord. Just a few minutes and we're wrapping up this morning. Talk to him. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. 
and all that has taken my heart sing lord i will bow i will bow to you to no other god but you I will worship you, nothing hands at me, but you alone. We cry before you, O oh God. It says, if my people who are called by my name, they are my people, they are called by my name. But if they shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins, cleanse their land. There is so much that God wants to do with us, but we must attain that state of brokenness. I dethrone everything that has taken your place. I dethrone ministry. I dethrone preaching, I dethrone oratory, I dethrone anything. You are everything, you are everything, you are everything, you are everything, you are everything. Few more minutes and we're done. Hela sana marakato sada Sebrantos Kodobalatusi Let me give us one last scripture to take home with Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. My son my son give me thine heart not your offering not your church not your mic what i want is your heart when we come back we'll take it from there my son what i need you've been giving me your offering you've been giving me your preaching you've given me access to your voice you've given me access to your mind what i want is your heart because whoever has your heart is truly your Lord father there are people within this auditorium so many outside thousands others following from all around the world I have come as you have sent me to speak and to contribute to the lifting the maturing and the excelling of the body of Christ even within this region I have brought your word challenging us to die that it is the price for life that the price for all of God is all of you the price for life is death the price for the throne is the cross that ministry is beyond Christian activities it is a motivation that seeks to see Jesus glorified see Jesus revealed to the nations and Lord I pray that within the times we're going to be having a loan before we resume the next session grant us grace to contemplate deeply on our lives and our approach to ministry redefine these terminologies in our minds and grant us the grace to reorder our steps our walk with you and Lord we declare that thine is the kingdom the power and the glory conference Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.